Hey, welcome to 4K X-Ray. Today we're going to teach you how to properly position for a scapular Y, a little trick that will help you going forward in the future. Now critiquing this image, you see that it separates the scapula and humerus from the ribs. The humeral heads should sit into the area between the chromium and the coracoid, right there in the glenoid cavity. If it is in this position, there is no dislocation seen. However, if it's anterior, it shows an anterior dis dislocation. Posterior is for a posterior dislocation. And this will help the medical doctor to be able to reduce this by either pulling or pushing onto the humerus to get it back into position. Now, positioning for this, you will rotate the patient 45 degrees towards the affected side. You will center the central ray, the proximal humerus, two inches below the top of the shoulder. Now keep in mind you will see a lot of technologists do this position anterior posterior as opposed to PA. That's because it is easier to visualize with the patient facing you and more comfortable for the patient. However, on the registry, remember it's always going to be PA and this will reduce dosage to the breast. Now you'll see a lot of technologists who complain about the arm position where the humerus is in these views. If this is a true lateral scapula, you would like to see the image just as shown here with the arm out of the direction of the scapula. However, for a shoulder, it's not really needed to be out of the way since it's really just for dislocation. Some textbooks will say it needs to be pulled up and some needs to say it needs to be uh, left down to superimpose the scapula. It just depends on the clinical uh, area where you are, what the doctor prefers. But again, remember for a scapula view, the lateral side, the arm will be out of the way. The technique for this should be using a grid or in the buggy around 70 at 20. You could use 80 at 10, obviously, to uh, reduce the uh, dosage to the patient. Remember, a knee and a shoulder is about the same thickness, so when you look at a patient, judge their shoulder by the size of their knee, and you can use the technique accordingly. Now, personally, I would use 72 inches instead of 40. Now, remember, the textbook will say to use 40 inches minimum. It's not mandatory, but it needs to be at least a minimum of 40 inches. Going back to your image critique factors, at 72 inches, you know that reduces magnification. You have better detail, less patient dose. And um, it is more wear and tear on the tube. However, I do everything at 72 inches, and you get a better picture. And it is less movement. So the more distance, obviously, the better. Now, one of the best tricks that I've learned in teaching students that have an issue with uh, positioning for this view is to look at yourself when you do rib x-rays. And when you position the patient correctly for rib x-rays at 45 degrees to either the RPO or the LPO position, notice in your rib x-rays what you see. On this right side here in the uh, right shoulder, you see a glenoid view. On the left side, you see your Y view. So every time you do a rib x-ray, I want you to look at the shoulder and see how the position is either open in the glenoid cavity or at least a Y view position. So now when you do your positioning for the shoulder view, position the patient's body as if you're positioning for ribs and center over the shoulder. And you'll get it every time. Now here on the left LPO side, you see a left glenoid cavity being opened up for the left gratial view. And here you see a Y view. So remember, if you're struggling with the Y view or the Grashi, position the patient 45 degrees, center over the shoulder, you'll get it every time.